the title of the message is Our Firewall. How many know what a firewall is? Only a few of you know what a firewall is. Literally everyone has it in their house. How many know what a firewall is? So in the beginning, in the, or maybe you couldn't hear what I said. A firewall. Is that better? A firewall. Um, from the beginning, uh, in the 1960s and even earlier than that, the original term of firewall was a wall that would separate an apartment from another. The, the wall was built of a different material, a material that could withstand the fire. So that if a fire broke out in one apartment, the people in the next apartment would have time to get out or time to stay there until the fire is quenched or whatever. It's walls that separate one apartment from another so the fire doesn't spread. Okay, in the 1980s, in the middle of the 1980s, the term was transferred and started being used in technological sense instead. Where a firewall is actually a device that stops malicious internet traffic from entering a computer network at home. Everyone has firewall in their home. At least you should have if you have a computer. Otherwise, you're probably infected with uh, viruses, okay? So there are different kinds of viruses. We have biological viruses. We have internet viruses. We have some spiritual viruses. We believe that today they're going to get cleaned out as well. So praise God. I'm going to talk about the firewall that we all have and that we need in our lives today. First of all, a computer that uses a firewall, so that firewall basically blocks traffic from going into a computer, internet traffic from spreading, malicious stuff to enter the network. And there is about 65,000 ports in a computer, 65,000 tiny entrances that different programs uses to go and in and out to connect to the internet. And a firewall closes off all the ones that aren't being used so that something can't sneak through an open port in the system, okay? And for those of us who are experienced in internet technology, you know that there is about three different types of firewalls. And, and it actually works perfectly in the spirit too. So I'm going to share with you three types of spiritual firewalls that you and I should have implemented in our lives already. If you haven't, today is the day for you to do so. Okay, how many are ready? Amen. If you're ready, can you wave at me? Amen. All right, some of you are not ready. I'm going to go ahead anyway. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Ready or not, here we come. <laughs> so the first firewall that is, is known uh, among men... Uh, in the internet sector is something that's called a hardware firewall. It's an actual device that you have at home that connects to your internet and before the internet reaches your computer, this hardware firewall stops malicious traffic. It's a tangible something, something that you can touch, but the enemy that this physical thing stops is not something that you can see. And actually it looks about like this. This is about how an internet Hardware firewall looks like sitting at home, okay? So if you have a device that looks like this. So for us as Christians, what do you think is something that is a tangible item that we can touch, that we can use, but that helps us to stop malicious traffic? Any, any guess? Oh, yeah. I kind of gave a clue there, right? The word of God right here is our hardware firewall, okay? And, and just like a firewall can sit at home, and if it's not installed properly, it's not going to serve its purpose. The same goes with the Word of God. This is something that you can actually see. Most of the things in our Christian journey, there are things that you can't see. There are things that you can't hear. There are things that you can't feel with your physical body. It's things that comes by faith. Here you have something that you can actually see. The word of God is many things. It's a lamp to, our, lamp to our path. It's a sword in the spirit. It's what guides us. It's what leads us. But something that I like to use for today's sermon is that the word of God is like an instruction manual. Can you say with me, the word of God, word of God. is my instruction manual. Is my instruction manual. What is it an instruction manual to? It's an instructional 
instruction manual to the heart of God. It's an instruction manual to walk in authority. It's an instruction manual to have a prosperous life. It's the instruction manual to have a successful life. Whatever you are looking for today, the word of God is the instruction manual for that. And all of this, the entire hardware, the most important instruction in this manual that you need to implement is one single verse. And I'm going to read it for you. But first, I'm going to do a little demonstration here. So there's something here, guys. This is a stain remover. I borrowed it from the cleaning department. I apologize for that. I kind of snuck in and took it. I'll return it. This is a stain remover. How many know how to use it? You know how to use a stain remover, clean your countertops, clean whatever, clean the carpet or something. Uh, and at the back here, there's an instruction manual. And it says directions for use. Before you use it, it's always advised that you read the instruction manual so you understand how to implement what is in the, on the inside. Now, many people go and be like, not for human and animal consumption. Wow, that's good. Use only as direction. Wow, do not inhale mist. Okay, avoid eye contact. Okay, those are really good revelations. But then they go ahead and they don't follow what is in here anyway. And then you have a viral YouTube video of someone who's being really stupid, putting flames on this thing or something, you know. You have to also do what the instruction manual says. You can't just read it. You have to apply it to your life. The, the Bible verse I'm talking about here to, to properly install our hardware firewall can be found in the book of James chapter 1. This is one of my favorite Bible verses. I always say that every time I preach. Sorry. James 1 verse 22. It's a very short Bible verse and that's literally the directions for using what is in here. It says this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Many of us have the word of God available in our life. We read it occasionally but we don't actually do what it says in here. If you want to have the promises that God has given you in this word. If you want the word of God to be able to protect you from the attacks of the enemy. You need to do what it says. This is your instruction manual. And trust me, you know when you, when you uh, order something from Ikea. How many used to order stuff from Ikea? My wife does it all the time. She never assembles it though. It's always me. Orders the stuff and then she's like, babe, the package has arrived. Uh-huh. You know, you order it, right? And Ikea instruction manuals, those of us who are experienced carpenters, for you it's like, yeah, you don't even need to look at it. But for some of us, that stuff is like Greek. Literally, it's so complicated. It's like putting this, which one is G? Literally, they don't even have, they're numbered. And here's A to D or whatever. Some people think that they can install things without reading the instruction manual. If I would do that, I would fail miserable. And whatever I, let's say I'm putting a table together. If I want to put any kind of weight on that table, it's going to collapse. The only way that you can uh, install a hardware firewall in your life to protect you against the enemy is by following the instruction manual. Step by step. Doing exactly what it says. Taking the steps that Jesus Christ has told you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I'm going to jump to the next uh, firewall here. How many know what the second one is? I mean, some of you should know. The second firewall that is implemented, preferably in a computer network, is something that's called a software firewall. Now, the hardware firewall and the software firewall normally work in tandem. You have both of them installed, but some people don't have software firewall. They trust the hardware firewall to do the job. Well, occasionally, stuff will sneak through the hardware firewall, and that's why you need to have a soft where firewall installed as well. What is our software as Christians? Can you imagine? Not just as Christians, as human beings. What's your software? It's your mind. Right up here is where software hard uh, firewalls are installed in your body. How does it happen? How does it work? How does it software uh, firewall get installed in your life? It depends. What are the thoughts that are running through your mind? 
What are the habits that you develop as a Christian? Whatever you want to build in your mind, it will come by building it through habits. I believe as a Christian that good habits is literally our spiritual immune system. Good Bible-filled habits is your spiritual immune system. Develop good habits to install a software. If it's not configured properly, it won't work. You have to configure your mind so that the software firewall in your mind can protect against the attacks of the enemy. Now I want to give you an example. I'm going to be really vulnerable with you here. When I was in, in Sweden, there was, there was times when there was no proper software firewall installed. I was angry. I was bitter. And those things, I could have overcome that if I had greater measure of habits in place. But I want to let you know something. The lessons that I learned from that experience is that if you don't develop good habits in advance, those good habits aren't coming later. If you are here struggling with lust today and you say, yeah, if someone sends me a, a pornographic uh, message on, on my social media, I'll be able to resist it by then. If you don't have a system in place already, how are you going to defend yourself? You can't put on your life vest when you're already in the storming water. You put it on first so that if you fall into the storming water, you will stay afloat. It all happens in your mind, people of God. Habits are meant to be developed during good times. And they are meant to be strictly followed during tough times. You set the standard for the life that you want to have. Nobody, be, nobody that goes out hunting lions is going to say, Oh, there's a lion there. Let me put bullets in the gun. Lion is coming. Let me put bullets in the gun. No. You make sure your gun is ready before you get out. I encourage you today, develop, raise your standard as a Christian. What are the habits that you follow today? What is the habits that mark your life? Develop those habits. It's going to be your software firewall when attacks come your way. When temptation penetrates the word of God. When things come and you begin to falter. What is in your mind determines the outcome of your temptations. I want to give you an example. There's a guy who has won the Ballon d'Or of football many times in the world. His name is Cristiano Ronaldo. How many know who Cristiano Ronaldo is? If you don't know him, he's on the screen behind me right now. <laughs> there we go. This is MVP right here. He plays football. Okay, guys? You know football? I know, I know, don't worry. He plays <laughs> soccer. Somebody sent me since the dollar became stronger than the euro, it's now soccer. You can never call it football again. So a little bit of an internal joke there. But yeah, he's a soccer player and he's known to be the best footballer in the world. Okay? He has an extremely high, highest level. When he's at his A game, he, he scores like something else. Hat tricks, four goals a game. He's insane. And for those of you who don't know who this is or you don't like soccer, there's some other random guy that I'm putting up on the screen right now. <laughs> so this is like the world's best American football player according to what I Googled. So Peyton Manning is, oh, he's not up yet. Peyton Manning. So uh, these guys, if you are into sport, you know that the people who are really, really successful, they have high, highest level. But one thing about Cristiano Ronaldo that is his biggest weakness is when he is having a low season, he's really low. I'm talking about when he's having a bad game, he'll be walking around on the field. He doesn't even run. Someone gives a pass and it's slightly to the side. He's like, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. You can't pass here. He doesn't run. He doesn't do anything. He's just complaining about everyone. So his, high, his lowest level is actually lower than most of his teammates. Some of his teammates don't have as high of a highest level, but they, they have a way more consistent lower level than him. As Christians, we all focus on our highest level. When all is well, when you hear God's voice clearly in a season, 
You're so close to Jesus. You're fasting and you don't even feel it. Everything is going good in your life. And you're like, oh yeah, God, I want to press closer to you right now. I want to be better at prophesying. I want to grow in my strongest area. But then when we fall, we fall so far down to our lowest level. Don't be like Cristiano Ronaldo. Don't be famous only for your high seasons. Work on your lowest. What I mean is when you're in good times spiritually, when you're feeling strong, don't focus on being even more loud in worship. That's good, but that's not what's important. Make sure that you cover the weak links. A chain is only as strong as its weak as its weakest link. Link. How far do you fall in your low season? How low do you go? Be, do you begin to open those random people's DMs when you're having a really bad time? How far do you go? You struggled formerly with anger. You thought you had overcome it finally. By low season, you go right back to where you used to be. Equip your lowest. Train your low area. There's a proverb by the Navy SEALs. And I love this. I love this so much. It says, I, I modified it slightly just to fit us as Christians. It says, in times of temptation and hardship, we don't rise to the occasion. We fall to the level of our training. You think that when that temptation comes, I will resist it. I'm a man of God and God will be with me. When that hardship comes over, I will be able to resist it and stand strong. No, you're not going to rise to the occasion with, when the devil comes knocking. You're going to fall to the lowest level that you allow yourself. How low can you go? Work on your lowest level. Develop greater habits so that you are equipped with guns, Bible verses that you have memorized. So when a situation arises, you speak that Bible verse over that situation. When a temptation comes, even if you're feeling weak, you're like, no God, you devil, I identify you even with my eyes shut. Develop your habits. Configure that software firewall. Hallelujah. And the third one, the third firewall to us as Christians, this is the best one. To those of you who knows what's coming, I love this. Get ready, guys. We're getting to the time of rounding up here. The third, the third firewall that is commonly used today, it's a firewall. It's cloud-based. <laughs> Come on. The third firewall is cloud-based. That means that someone else takes care of your protection. You don't even need to work for it. Someone else is in charge. You don't even know when the attack's coming because they take care of your defense. They will protect you. They will disarm. They will destroy the enemy. And you don't even know in your sleep it will happen. That is our cloud-based firewall right there. Hallelujah. When, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, that's so good. It's so good. It's cloud-based. Someone else is in charge of your protection. And the best way to protect yourself as a Christian is a three-fold firewall. You've got the cloud-based firewall. You make sure that you're paying for your subscription so that the protection will continue in your life. How do you pay for the protection of Jesus? All you need to give is your time. He wants your time. It doesn't cost nothing. Give him your time and you are renewing the cloud-based subscription of firewall in your life. Have the hardware firewall. Let this be close to your heart. Let this be your everything. Desire it. Hunger for it. Go deeper in it because you know it will save you one day. If, you, if, your, your, if your life depended on knowing the Bible, how long would you survive? Let's say for every Bible verse you know, you get one breath. How long will you live here? Every Bible verse you know, you get another breath. Some of us have already started holding our breath. Build yourself up. This is real. This is living. There's nothing religious about reading the Bible all the time. Read it. Meditate on it. Memorize it. Let it be part of your life. Install good habits. 
So that when temptation comes, you're already armed and ready for it. Nothing's going to track you down. Nothing's going to take you down. Because you know already, if he, even though he slay me, he is my Lord. It doesn't matter if he, give, he gave and he takes away. Blessed be your holy name. Build your lowest level. And don't wait until you're in the wilderness to develop a water system where you can uh, recycle water. Do it now. When water is accessible to you, build it up in your life. Hallelujah. But there's one more thing that I want to share with you. I was reading the word of God and, the, and God showed me this. And, and this is the best part. I really love this part. The Bible talks about, everywhere in the Bible, it talks about growth. It talks about growing up, expand, multiply, go out and increase. Look around you, God told Abraham. As far as you can see, it belongs to you. Jesus, uh, God said in Isaiah 54, expand your tent plugs. Expand it. He told the people of God in Genesis, go out and multiply. The Bible talks in the New Testament, in the letters from Apostle Paul, it's time for you to grow up. Grow up in the power that God has given you. It's not enough just to think that you're going to live a life where you're going to have a firewall and you're going to be safe inside your city. I want you to be with me right now. If you can rise to your feet right now as we are rounding up this, this message right now. Our lives is like a city. You live in a city. Some cities worship Jesus. Some cities worship idols. Some cities are growing. Some cities are shrinking. Some cities are calm. Some cities are noisy. There's a lot of crime rate in some cities. Our life is like a city. And I want to read a Bible verse for you. Just like the firewall protects us from foreign invaders. It protects us from thieves that comes to steal, kill and destroy. But that is not all. God has told us, I want you to grow. I want you to multiply. I have given you everything to walk out and step on snakes and scorpions. It's time for you to multiply. Increase. Let the word of God in you grow. Let the spirit of God in you grow. And there's a Bible verse that I came across from the book of Zechariah chapter 2. I don't read Zechariah a lot, but this is good. It says the vision of the measuring line. Zechariah 2 verse 1. Then I raised my eyes and look and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem. To see what is its width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him. Who said to him, run. Speak to this young man. Saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. The promise of God is for you to begin to grow. It's not enough for you to just live in your safe little incubator covered by everything. Nothing can get to your own local area network. It's time to take a step out. And when you grow up, as Apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I left childish ways behind. He stepped into what he knew God had for him. So just like the city of Jerusalem cannot contain the livestock and the people in it because it's growing it's expanding some of our are so just like Jerusalem today and I love the final verse don't read it before me this is really good I love it so much God Almighty doesn't want you to just live in the city and have a firewall it says here in verse 5 for I says the Lord will be a wall of fire all around her and I will be the glory in her midst it is not enough to just live a life and plain defensive Christianity. It's time for you today to step out and begin to play some offensive Christianity. The devil is not taking breaks. He is not taking pauses. You can't continue living in your city thinking that that is all that you need to do. God has called you to break down the walls and let the wall of fire surround you. The firewall is meant to protect and defend people on the inside 
from what's happening on the outside. But the firewall is meant to burn anything that gets close to you. Stop thinking that you're a victim as a Christian. Stop focusing on how much the enemy is attacking you today and tomorrow and yesterday. It's time for you to attack him with the full force in the name of Jesus that you have received. The wall of fire is all around you. Grow, mature, and get into the promise that God has for you in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to hungrygen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.